Send me to the rough places. <laughs> the, the gentle kids coming out of Bard and out of Columbia, they will get a nicer school downtown. <laughs> I, I will go to the rough places. And that's how I liked it, you know? Wow. Um, yeah. So yes, my the big issue for me was how do I enter? How do I how do I engage these kids who are like who are fed up, who are bored, who feel who feel disrespected, who the teachers don't see them. This is what we used to do, this the, we don't see you. We're just gonna lecture you. Um, and after many attempts, I did screaming exercises. I did all kinds of, I did everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear, we did, like, we did low screaming. And we built it up in high screaming. And then we brought, you know, it worked. But then I discovered Henry. And I developed this lecture where I did the canon of history, you know, the Renaissance into the 19th century, and, the modernist and what have you. Um, and I ended that section with Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel creation of Adam. Just of that that close up of the two fingers meeting. And I segue that into Lee Quinones, who did that piece, I stopped that bomb piece. Lee Quinones has a full car mm. with mm. the creation of Adam. I'm in a, on a subway train. Wow. And that was my segue. And then I did my section on the graffiti world, which had ter- totally blew me away. Um, and I spoke of graffiti in formal language, hmm. in terms of all the issues that the masters, that the, you know, the canon of art history went through, you know, the studio, the stories, the finances, the formality of the artwork, how do you, how do you occupy a blank space? Face, how yes, do you, are, you know, what's the, the line, the negativity, you know, all, all the, the art school stuff. Um, and it was a great tool because the kids understood that. They understood what a line meant, what a gesture was, what, what a connector meant. So in, when, you, when you discuss a classic composition, there's all, you know, you discuss a sound, it's like the triangulation and there's the, how the field relates to the house and how the trees connect it is, you know. So the same thing happens in graffiti. There's this whole, this is language. The letters are real, they're alive, and they're, and they're interacting. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I needed to say I was fascinated by the work itself. Um, and as a political person, as an activist, um, it, it always infuriated me that people look, look it down on us. Um, and and still, to, in, still today, people refer to graffiti artists as kids. Mm -hmm. um, or the kids did this, the kids did that. Yeah, a lot of them, they were kids in the beginning, they, you know, but they, they were artists. Um, you don't speak of great artists as kids, even though they were, they were younger when they, 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 they initiated their careers. Um, so I wanted to speak of these guys as artists. You know, they were knuckleheads, but so are uh, all the artists I know. Um, so, making the distinction between vandalism, between crime, oh, and, and full-blown like creativity. Crazy. Amazing. I'm sorry. Whoa. I got you. Don't be knocking people oh, down, Rocio. <laughs> 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 you took my spot. You took my spot. You took my spot. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> so, it became important to me, even with this show, I'm constantly trying to explain to me, just look at the work. Mm. Look at the work. There's mm. a difference between somebody tagging up on your house and somebody making a great piece of artwork. Um, now, true, there was vandalism involved, there's illegality involved, there's a lot of, there was stealing going on. Here we'll talk about all this stuff. There was, there was a culture. There was the, the South Bronx was burning. Burning. Was burning. When I first started hanging out in the South Bronx in 1976, um, it, it was that picture up there is subtle. That's a that's that's a pretty picture. Those, uh, <laughs> the, the Bronx in Spanish Harlem, um, it was burning every day. You mm -hmm. saw stuff going on. And, I, and again, I, I started hanging out in the Bronx in '76. And it had been going on for 10 years, probably. Who knows how long the, you know, it was, it was being sabotaged. Um, mm -hmm. And there was a, um, I used to spend my summers in West 56th Street, my cousin's house. And there was a lot of writers there. There was a wall behind the, the Holiday Inn that was constantly being pieced on. Um, so I got to sit in with the guys. Um, and one of the things I came away with is the whole idea that we are invisible. We don't exist in, uh, in society. Um, every, you know, if you don't feel a certain look, a certain, if you're not participating in a certain manner, um, you're non-existent. Um, and subconsciously, the graffiti world in general, it wasn't a political manifesto, but in general, it was more like, tag, I'm here, tag, I'm here. You think I don't, I don't belong? Fuck you. Yeah. Tag, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Tag, I'm here. And in the, uh, at a certain point in the late 60s, early 70s, the tags became elaborate. Mm -hmm. They started to get dimensionality. They started to get decoration. Um, they started to become this pictorial phenomena. Um, but it, it, the, the part that attracted me was the fact that this invisible community that we were part of, without an agenda, made ourselves present. Um, the break dancers, the, the, the DJ in, in, in the schoolyards, um, is the birth of hip hop. Um, whether we like it or not, whether we approve of it or not, it was, a, it was a, a, an affirmation. It was like, I'm present, I'm king. They called themselves kings. If they, if they were significant enough, they became kings, they became royalty. But in society's eyes, we were nothing, we were like, the bottom of the bottom and this we are so lucky so lucky to have a nut <laughs> like you Henry he realized how significant this was there's 800 yeah. plus of these trains I don't know if you ever try to catch a train, a piece. <laughs> you got one, you're bad. <laughs> My man got 800 of them. If you could just imagine the amount of work and frustration that went into capturing this. Um, we have a huge... Whatever your, your perception of this work is, um, 
we have a piece of history yeah. that will never be repeated again. Yeah. Repeat is hot in Europe right now. Mm -hmm. It's hot. Yeah. Those yeah. kids have, yeah. and I'm calling them kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Those artists <laughs> have some skills that are coming out of the wazoo. Um, I've been watching all these videos from Europe. They're badass. Yeah. So good. They're yeah. bad in Italy, in Spain, in Germany, yeah. in Paris, in France, yeah. in England. They're some butt kicking artists out there. Um, and we owe an immense debt to you because without that sacrifice, because it was not an easy task, luckily it, com it converted into this amazing work that uh, followed um, Henry Brit uh, Mr. Simbao in Star Wars, yep. did the book, yes. Great Ten Art, Woo! did the yeah. uh, right. yeah. so Art. Yeah. What's the last one? The one. Training Days. Training Days. Oh. Really cool. Good read. They were, they were interviews. So you, you get to hear the stories of like these tough guys talking about how they started and how they were shitting their pants. <laughs> 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 it's scary. It's yeah. scary when you go, you know, when you go into a train track, you're breaking the law, there's dogs, there's guards, there's, there's electricity that can like whoop you up. <laughs> 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 uh, and there's no light. There's no light and it's cold, you know, it's all the, um, So it, it was an amazing moment that will never be repeated. Um, and we have it. We yeah. have it. So without further ado. Okay. So why why are these pictures? You know, Rennie Rennie mentioned oh, mentioned the gangs. Rennie mentioned fashion moda. It's interesting. These are not my photographs, but um, in like 1988, I was in fashion moda, which you mentioned, and there was there was a guy there, a middle-aged man with these jackets. And I thought, whoa, this would make a great show. Why don't, why don't we get together and make a show of these jackets? He was Benji Melendez, the, the president wow. of the Ghetto Brothers. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, That's how you meet Benji? Yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. And, and he said, you want to know something about um, gangs? You go to the Chelsea Hotel and ask for Rita on the roof. Rita Fetcher. <laughs> and it was Rita Fetcher, who was a school teacher in the Bronx, uh, when she was young and getting her master's degree, she taught in, in Monroe High School. And uh, she was the art teacher, and her boyfriend was the math teacher. And they were your, remember there was a category of teacher called the radical teach? Yes. Mm -hmm. nice. This, they were the radical teach, the quintessential. And they said, the smart kids, the true leaders of the community are all in the street. Everybody else is here, but the leaders are down in the street. Wow. And they got to know them, and these are the kids they got to know. And um, they brought them into their homes, they embraced them, they had you know this whole relationship with them. They were involved with downtown scene, the uh, living theater, and that kind of thing. And, and they would bring the kids down, and they would, they would participate. You know, they would bring conga drums and stuff like that, and, and play, play part of the whole thing. So it was, she was quite an amazing sort of catalyst between uptown and downtown already, way back in 1970s. Mm. So I met her and, and she and I got together and we, we made a follow-up, a kind of seven-up for the gang presidents. There were five of them that she was close to, we found four of them, and 20 years later did a follow-up film, which we called Fly and Cut Sleeves. Mm. Um, so, this is all together. Why did I put this up in the slideshow? It's like, because what this is about to me is, is the creativity of youth, the kind of innate creativity that um, if things are given to you, you can create. If things aren't given to you, you can create. And that's what these kids did. Out of, out of nothing, except in this, in this case, this creation, and it's more than individual creation, it's a social instinct, kind mm -hmm. of an innate human social instinct to grouped together when it's necessary. And this was banding together for self-protection in a completely fucked up situation, a crumbling city, a defunded city, a city that was being you know, abandoned uh, by 
federal government investing money and, and things like that at this time. Because the whole interstate system was being built, investments were being made in the south and in the west, and the, and the northern cities were, you know, remember the, remember the Club of Rome predictions? Or not predictions, but consultations? That people like Reagan were saying, there's no, there's no hope for the cities, abandon them, let them go. Mm. So this was going on with the people in them. So these people had, <laughs> had extraordinary difficulty in, as adolescents going out into the, into the city, it was dangerous. It was dangerous, and rivals would go to be beaten up, we banded together. And um, they are, of course, people who walk down the sidewalk and see them coming the other direction would walk to the other side. They were terrified. These look like just cute kids, which of course they were. But um, they had this terrible reputation, and because it was a dangerous situation in the street, there were uh, there was all kinds of bad stuff going on. But the the um, essential drive for it was for self protection, and it was it was surrounded with this amazing creativity. You know, the jackets, the kind of modeling themselves on on. Um, liberation, national liberation groups. Mm -hmm. They felt very close to that. They were kind of the nephews or the, the little brothers of the young lords and the Black Panthers mm -hmm. in this era. And um, they responded to that and they were very political. Um, so much more so than, than the when hip hop emerged later, it was much less political than these, these kids were. Mm -hmm. um, that was interesting. So this is around the time that I not in 88. I came to New York in the early 70s. And there were still kids like this roaming around. And I was fascinated, but I was frightened. I wouldn't walk up to them and say, hey, you look like, this is interesting. May I take a picture? You know, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> so so um, I quietly went about my business. I was a sculptor. I was commuting on the trains. And, uh, oh here, yeah, the Ghetto Brothers. This is Benji Melendez's brother, um, and they were musicians. They were wonderful musicians. They were they sound a lot like Santana, kind of the early Santana. Um, this is must be 1970 because Rita's material was all around that. They're already marking out gang territory with their names with spray paint. Of course, this this is kind of when I came into the picture. This is not my picture either. But this is what was going on when I moved to New York. I didn't start taking pictures of graffiti for another four years or so after I moved here. After I moved there, um, when I just couldn't resist it anymore, because the evolution of stuff going on in the trains was too extraordinary. This was one of the first first things that, that I saw. Not the absolute first, I'll get to that. Um, but this is kind of the style of what was going on in the mid-70s. These are your works, the last three. These are my works, yeah. Once you get into the graffiti, now from here on out, it's me. Um, this is Intervale Avenue in the Bronx. And the Bronx was burning all around it. Um, even now, this would have been um, 77, 78. Um, you, would, you would smell smoke whenever you went up there. <laughs> and there were vast acres, acres and acres of rubble. Um, <laughs> It was actually shocking. Interville burned down itself when I was there. <laughs> the station yeah. burned down. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this was this was a great this I didn't know when I moved to New York that the trains ran outside. And I was watching them in the tunnels and thinking, boy, I wish I could take pictures of these. But they wouldn't look good, you know, with the flash and you know. Um, so when I was exploring and I found out that you could go out, um, Wow. One Saturday, I was up on the line, and these two these two cars, Lee, it was Merry wow. Christmas, that had been painted in in uh, December of 1976. Wow! And this was already summer of 1977, <laughs> wow. and and uh, they were still intact, and they were still intact, and this I didn't know till years later. They were still intact because 
the people who worked in the yards liked them. Yeah. Right. So they were parked on a weekend in the middle track. And I said, as I rode up on the train between one station and the next and saw them, I thought, God, I gotta get that picture. What will I do? Well, I had to run out on the catwalk in between stations, which was a little scary. And I had an adrenaline rush. And when I got out there, I had with my 50 millimeter lens, of course, I couldn't get the whole car in. So I took, as you see on the top row, I took one, two, three, four, five pictures, mm. um, which I later fused together in the studio. So thus was born a whole technique, which I was to use from here on out for another like seven years. This is what I did. I'd go up on the platform. I learned that without having to run out into the middle, I could stand on the station platform of the uptown side in the morning. And when the downtown trains came in, on the downtown side and stop, I could quickly take four or five pictures with my 50 millimeter lens mm. and and get the get the train. Um, <laughs> for yeah, so great. <laughs> so oh, you got these back there, man. <laughs> Is that, did you make that tag in the back? Or are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, no. Busted. That was, that was um, <laughs> crash native for me. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> but this is the you know the reason why I never met any artists for two or three years, whereas they saw me taking pictures. They'd ride by and they'd say, "Who's that dude?" And then they'd say, "He's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away." So they stayed away because obviously I looked like uh, an undercover cop. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually. Um, the, the ice was broken, you know, somebody had the courage to approach me and find out what I was up to. And, uh, you know, I'd run into them all the time. They suggested if you want to meet artists, you go to 149th Street, the Grand Concourse. Wow. Oh, and there yeah. they were, getting ready awesome. for the night's work. They had wow. uh, all the paint. Awesome. And, and so little by, little by little, I began learning everything about this. Like, you had to steal the paint. Um, obviously, it was too expensive. Those are Rostolians? Those are, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rostolians. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and everybody, it was, obviously, it was it was an activity which, which for which people had great enthusiasm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Is that me? What? No, it's a, it's a, it's a boy named Post. Okay. So, TBA was a crew, the Bad Artist crew, and also at the time in the vernacular, bad meant good. Mm -hmm. So you used to say, oh, that piece is bad, you know, that meant it was good. Stupid though. Yeah, and stupid bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, so, and I began to understand that, wow. that people were painting themselves, their lives. And, and their, and, the projection of their own, how they wanted their themselves to be, the projection of themselves, you know, was to be like this. That's awesome. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. It's bad. Of course, it became for the really obsessed like this. You know, you're you're definitely a spray paint head. And then for adolescent defiance, and for this his mother nearly strangled me, and with reason. You know, here he is on the downtown live train line, lying down on the little wood separation of the third rail, casually hanging his hand down. Um, yeah, so. He's an amazing person. Yeah. So, and this was sort of part of the whole attitude of graffiti writing. You know, is it art or is it vandalism was the argument then. And I always said, well, you have to hold two ideas in your head at the same time. Because there is this aspect of it which is defiant, which is, you know, and you can argue, as Rennie said, you know, this is our, this is our city. We live here. These are our walls. These are our trains. You know, we talk mm -hmm. about the public. This is us. 
So what's what's the problem? So well, those were there such messed kind of up trains. I don't see how there should be vandalism to decorate them. <laughs> well, I'm right. Every, and the city they itself was neglected. Right. The trains were neglected. Yeah. The neighborhoods yeah. were neglected. They were gutted. Mm -hmm. And so you have to say, well, who's the vandal? Who's the criminal? Mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan. Exactly. Yeah, well, there you go. When you start asking questions, you start getting answers. <laughs> so, but then, you know, you call people, yes, this is the crew of CIA, which also was an alias of CIA, was um, crazy inside artists. Um, and criminals invading again, and about six other things that stand for it. And here we have. The attitude. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now and Henry. <laughs> yeah, and then Henry after a while. Exactly. And as you say, no. before text message, the thing oh, about this message. <laughs> 600 miles of track throughout the city of New York. Of trains going, three and a half million people a day riding on them, oh. you know, and from, from one neighborhood to the next at a time when it was still dangerous to walk into somebody else's neighborhood oh. and, and realize we're just sort of transitioning from the gang era where it was deathly dangerous to walk into somebody else's mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. yep. especially wearing your color, to a time when this was going throughout the city and everybody in every neighborhood could see it. Mm. And they began to admire people they didn't know, people in other parts of the city. And um, things changed. This is me, my studio downtown in Soho, where I had a, a sculpture studio. I was making stone sculptures. That's on Grand Street? That's on Grand Street. Um, I had a ground, a ground floor studio with overhead beams I could lift, I had hoists, I could lift oh. stones. I really had, had the thing hooked up. Yeah. I was making these sculptures. Um, and because it was a big space, and I was doing this sort of sideline of graffiti photography, um, you know, and I, I had these albums that I pasted up the trains in. <coughs> I had three of these albums, which by then I had maybe 500 trains or 100 trains, I don't know. Um, and so this became kind of the epicenter of, of you know, sort of the cultural center, like a, a museum. And writers flocked to it to spend the afternoon looking through the, these, uh, these books. And your neighbors were thrilled. My neighbors were thrilled. They were. One of my my immediate neighbor upstairs said to me with his voice shaking in rage that you aren't even a social worker. You don't have a degree in social work. You have no business doing anything with these people. He was enraged. What about if you were a Marine? Would that have so these were the people he found um, unworthy. Is that Days? Um, yeah, Days. Yeah. Days, Duro, and uh, Lil, Lil Crazy Ray. So by this time I had met, uh, he was part of Rock City too. This is inside the studio. Generally speaking, people would come out and hang out and draw and look at the pictures. And and uh, you know, hang out. Um, I bring, I include this just as a way of saying, you know, obviously people painted on monuments and things like that, which you could say is, you know, is ugly. Why do they do that? I don't want them to do that. They're, you know, well, but look at, um, this is actually, you know, they didn't do this to the city. They didn't do this to the city. Right. You know, so come on, get, get a sense of proportion. Mm. And this, this to me, yeah, what's fantastic about this is, and this to me is the spirit of this, these, and these are kids. 
This all started with kids, even though they're all 50 now and doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. They were all kids when they, when they were inventing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's the spirit of hip hop mm -hmm. that you, you aspire to excellence mm -hmm. and you prove it and you do it with what's at hand. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a, what do you call those things in the, in the gymnasium? The gymnastics, the gymnastics. Mm -hmm. You make it up with what's at hand in this slot, and you, you hope, you, hopefully, you've had your tetanus, tetanus shot. <laughs> Leap yeah. off these, oh my God! Leap off these springs and fly over, and you land on the on the foam. <laughs> okay, it's extraordinary. Look at this. Oh my God! Wow! Wow! wow. wow. Yep. Yeah. They're so young. Yeah, yeah. They're, but look at the rain and the missing windows. And yeah. yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> that's, yeah, that's Bruckner Boulevard. That's Bruckner Boulevard, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. way up above. So, as you know, as I got to know the scene and I began to understand how, how carefully everything was done. If you were a graffiti writer, it was a career. Um, your, your schooling suffered, obviously, because in order to accumulate the paint, prepare your your work for the night and to work all night doing it. Um, yeah. I mean, here in this uh, this sketch, which was the sketch that the artist took to the yard. Is that his color on the side? Huh? Is that his color line? And that's, uh, that's the colors he was going to use on the side. He planned it out. Wow. Icy gray. They were all these, you know, it's like iconic paint names. Icy gray. Federal safety purple. <laughs> <laughs> Wet look purple. Beige, leather brown. What's that one? Gumma? Gumma. <laughs> you know, strange, true blue. Mm. Anyway, it's it's all these amazing old Rustoleum and Krylon colors. That was what was available. I was talking and to this was, yeah? to Lee Quinones about putting together a show of the sketches that they took to the trains. Yeah. Because uh, most of them don't exist anymore. Yeah. They all crumbled up. They didn't yeah. take the mess there. But these were not random. These were not things that they would just went up and just no, no. threw up there. No, no. They, they designed them. They figured out the drawings, the connections, the Was that your studio? Was that? Was that when you made that picture? This here? Yeah. Yeah, he brought them to me. What I, we, I should say, I developed a kind of, um, my relationship to them from the beginning was because I had the photos, I would give them photos of their, of their own trains. Mm, and they would give me sketches and things like that in return. That's Some so of them would give me sketches. Lee held on to his, too. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that's a lot of money. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. I have a bunch, yeah. 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 I have A1s, I have phase twos, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and it was just, you know, mostly they would, it was for me, I would get information. They would tell me when they'd done a piece, and so I would know on what line I had to go around and try to grasp it. What is all that detail in the mask there, or around the eyes? Is that drawn in? Or is that it's it's drawn in. It's a um, it's like a painting it's a kind itself. of because it's to create a, a sense of the glass and the separation from the face. So the eyes and, and the eyebrows are are received from it. I think it's it's. Yeah. Uh, in the drawing, even. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. Cause 207 was this guy's name. Um, Mayor, who was about 14 at the time, Min in the background. This was one of the few times I went to the yards um, because I felt, I felt I had to do it as a person you know, sort of setting myself up, myself up as, a, as somebody who knew something about it. Mm -hmm. um, I'd better go and, and experience it. So I did. I did do it, and that was enough. I didn't want to do it very often. <laughs> um, this evening, in this particular place, this was New Lots in Brooklyn, and at the time, there was just a chain link fence with a hole in it you could crawl through, and so that was easy. We did that, and they started to paint, and I was snapping pictures. And, and I heard one of them yell, yo, chill, chill. And, and he said, you got to get out of here, because he saw workers coming out of the pipes. 
Oh with pipes. God. Pipes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know, holding big pipes. They the, hurt. They hurt. They hurt. So we grabbed the pain and ran and back out through the hole. That's important. You always grab the pain. Never leave the pain behind. <laughs> yeah. Never leave the pain. But uh, you see, he's here he's, this is man. He's holding his, his sketch and uh, he's painting. Mm. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. That's illegal. That's illegal. That's an illegal act. <laughs> yeah. So, but look at the expression on my face. Because after we left the, the pipe incident in that yard, we went to the underground tunnel. And they said it was safest to paint in the middle track. There were about 12 rows of trains parked. And it was safest to go to the middle. You know, nobody would see us there. But to get to the middle, you had to crawl under the trains, which were locked. Oh my gosh. The trains were, you know, how the little compressors yeah. start. Yeah. And you're crawling under it. And you're wondering, is this going to move? <laughs> <laughs> is it actually going into service? <laughs> so six trains in, we finally get there. And so I see stark terror in my face. Yes, I'm going to do the fill-in. I did not do the outline. <laughs> Who's outlining it? Mayor. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is, an, you see where I'm standing, or one of the guys standing? That, that thing there is what goes into the third rail, which is connected on the other side of the train. The train. But what you don't know is that they're both oh. live. Oh. Oh, the whole God. system is alive. Wow. So that thing, if you touch it, it's like... Charcoal. Bye. Oh, yeah. So, there we are. This was actually, you know, like <laughs> Sunday. You could walk in with impunity and start to paint. It always amazed me. So, look how casual everything Relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> was that seen? That was seen, and this is dust. Yeah. Dust of UA. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This I was high. I, I was ah, high. Ah, ah, <laughs> I, I, was high. I include this because graffiti painted on trains or illegally especially is like performance art. Mm -hmm. Because you can preparate you can do all the preparation you want for it, but what you see is what you get. You don't get another chance. Mm. So you got to put it up. And, you, and you're doing this under circumstances of, of rather extreme pressure. Uh, you know, fear of getting caught and it's dark and you know, all, of the, all of that stuff. Which of course is why people want to do it because you get this incredible adrenaline rush and everything. But in addition, he was also high, but that's like an excuse. <laughs> you know. I'm sorry it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. No, no. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. cheap excuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, artists of words. They were by this time quite self consciously artists. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That is cool. And these were, I started, there was a year, I think it was 78, where the trains were, they had, they had a new machine to buff the train, mm. and they ran them all through, so there was really nothing to take pictures of on the line. Mm. Yeah. And so I started, I started walking around the city, and I'd go to the neighborhoods that I had ridden through, like up in the Bronx, I spent a lot of time walking through there. Take, snapping pictures of walls. Like this was a crash piece. When did you meet Crash? Um, the 1979. He was one of the people who was at the bench when, when I was told to go there to meet artists. Crash was there. Crash is one of the artists who made a transition into a very successful career. Yeah. Mm. Crash is having, so having a successful career. And quite nicely, he and his daughter have started a gallery in the South Bronx called Wall Works. And it's at the corner of Brookner Boulevard and um, Alexander Street. Wow. That's my old hood. Yeah. Sophisticated.
chromium technique. Yeah. Day one. That's wow. A1. Wow. Wow. A1 was extraordinary painter. He did a lot of the early original party flyers. Bio. <clears throat> he's, he's a member of Tots Crew. And Tats Crew are very, very successful as commercial artists now. Wow. Uh, doing, doing major murals, commercial, uh, to order, to commission. And they're still, they're still together as a crew, as an original crew of neighborhood gang friends. And uh, in business together. Uh, when Point, when right? is that? Yeah, out of Hunts Point. Mm -hmm. When was that picture? That would have been uh, 82, something like that. So Task Crew's been around that long? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're younger They're younger than most of the ones that I dealt with, um, but not that much younger. I, I, they, I overlapped with I them. always I thought Task Crew was like a the 90s thing. No, well, they, stay, they stayed around. They stayed around, yeah. yeah. That's P wow. kid, the terrible P kid. Ooh. Yeah, he is so cool. He is, he is so bad. <laughs> no question. You really see the evolution of the technique, too. Yeah. Oh, and scene, you know. Yeah. He's amazing. But wow. more sort of illustrational than pictorial. Than the yeah. Others, pictorial, yeah. yeah. These weren't done in one night. Yeah. You have to, you have to work fast. You have to work fast. <laughs> you learn on the trains to work fast and so you could do it. Oh, wow. Wow. But the world the the handbook course were great format, but they created a real drag for kids to play handball. True. You know oh, paddle ball yeah. players. Paddle, yeah. paddle, you play with a little hard black ball. It was really hard to How see. How can you see the black ball? Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So they would have they would have these battles and you know, like my first wife lived on 107th Street, right next to the Hall of Fame, the Lehman Project. So they were always fighting with the computer kids. Yeah, but you know, they wanted to play ball, and the, the guys, they constantly were tagging up the... Well, they would come, actually, <laughs> they would come to play on Sunday morning, and they'd come down early with a bucket of paint and a roller. Wow. And go over right, and right. <laughs> Here's another interesting artist. This is John One, John 156. Very early on, was was uh, moving into abstraction. Oh, Yeah, that's 106, isn't it? That's 106. This was Sane. May he rest in peace. Um, he had a very special gift. This was much later. This was already in about 85, 86. Another Sane. 87. Yeah, the halo. The vengeful. The angriest angel I ever seen. Angry. Wow. Yes, a vengeful angel. Repent or die. And that's another one by him, even oh, wow. more scary. Wow. Whoa, that's crazy. It's crazy, but it's also very sad because he he was he disappeared and, and was found floating in the bay. Oh. And nobody knows if he jumped or just was doing something really Of course, this is the, the great Lee Quinone. Wow. Is that the, his famous wall? Yeah. yeah. And, and it's still a wall on the Lower East Side. I think X-Men have, have kind of hold on it with the school. Because they, they do pieces. Of, they do a, a wonderful sort of positive stay in school on one side. Mm -hmm. And then kind of opposite misses on the other. <laughs> so, but it's, it's oh, quite beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So he doesn't do that wall anymore? No. Because he did that wall for years. He did that he wall for years. Him. I have wall right here. Here's another. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. That line is a beast. Yeah. It's ridiculous. The line, line is amazing. Yeah. And, the, and the skeletons in the crypt. Mm. Yeah. And then that one. Wow. Now, you can't that see it very well. That was like late 80s. That's an extraordinary. That was late 80s. <laughs> 
It's unbelievable. And you can't really see it. I'm sorry the picture isn't more close up. You see in the right side the hypo needles. Wow. And you see right. those okay. sort of ghostly figures. Wow. Those are like the junkies. Wow. And with the needles and everything. And, and the bike guy is light. It's like leaping above it all. Wow. His That's power, amazing. life, is and his energy. Name in there huh? Has his name in there anymore? Lee? Yeah. No. Wow. Uh-uh. He may have signed in a little lettering somewhere. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. And he, he, this was another Lee piece. Wow. I was going to say, he, I have, we had in, a, in one of the shows, he had a piece of Vietnam helicopters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did a whole series of helicopters in the jungle. You see the Angkor Wat heads, the big, yeah. the big stone oh, heads yeah. from, from Southeast Asia, from Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Were these, have these done with scaffolding? How are they done? <laughs> yeah, he had ladders. But this, he, he didn't do scaffolding. How many of these are saved now? I mean, it's, this like is gone. None of them. All, I mean, it, it's all ephemeral. Them. You have to. The only the only wall in New York which. Exists from the 80s is the crack is whack piece by Keith Haring. Yes, Keith Haring. Oh, wow. Keith Haring yeah. that, that the city maintains really? because wow. of the message. And He's actually from Kutztown. And yeah. because Keith Haring became very famous in there. Yeah. I went to Kutztown. That's a Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Wow. Vulcan, who was another great artist. Who, who lived right across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. he, he, could, he could sort of keep an eye on <laughs> <laughs> He was up like on a fifth or sixth yeah. floor. He pretty girl. Pretty girl, that's Abby. She was an art and design student and she did pieces and she did paint. Um, along with Lady Pink and a couple of others, Lady Hearts. There were, at the time I was taking pictures, there were several of them. Wow. They're all. Okay, this is Martha Cooper and I made a book called Subway Art. Mm -hmm. and our original title was Art Transit, which we thought, and I still think, was more clever. But the publisher refused. Oh, we no. <laughs> no. The publisher said, nobody will know what that means. <laughs> you have to call it what it is. It's Subway Art. Yeah. So we, we had to, you know, you're in a position where you have to say, OK. If you're a first-time person and you, you, you just are amazed that somebody's going to publish your book. But the thing is, we, we created this dummy, page by page, um, of the whole book which turned into, out to be subway art. And we had, to, we had to go to Frankfurt in Germany to the book fair, because we tried to get it published in New York and nobody would look at it there. They hated it in New York. All the publishers were like, mm -hmm. And we ended up going to Frankfurt. And we kind of researched beforehand the publishers we might try to show it to. The first one we walked to was Thames and Hudson. <coughs> and they said, yeah, this is great. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, so they said, yeah. But we were, we didn't do that. The, the agent was supposed to go there and, and talk to them. Right. Mm -hmm. Nobody, it was uh, not done. We had our little trolley. This is big. We dragged it on our little trolley mm -hmm. and took it to the desk and showed them and they were like, you know, haha, look at these, look at these people bringing something to us. <laughs> so wow. that's kind of an amazing training by John and Kyle. And it says free South Africa on one side wow. and Central America on the other. Wow. So this was like early 80s. And John, that's John one? John one. John one is very successful. He's very successful. Paris. He's lived in Paris for oh 25 God. years. Wow. Mm. So good. Uncle Sam is the skeleton. Yeah. Right. Deadly, yeah. deadly, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am offended. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But you know, as, a, as an observer of this whole graffiti and everything, I thought, and a lot of people who were observers thought, this is a voice for people who, a political voice even, for people who don't have one. Yeah. Exactly. So it, what an opportunity for them to do messages. Right. But generally speaking, they weren't messages, except <laughs> your name. Mm -hmm. And there are very few things, like this is one instance where somebody did this. 
And uh, of course, Lee Quinones is another. He, he did have messages. And this was teamed up with the Stop the Bomb. Oh. It was There's a two, two trains, trains done in one night. Two oh. trains. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Oh. And, and solo. He didn't go over How the many cans of paint did he have? Well, well, uh, probably about 80. Wow. <laughs> Take about 40 cans per train. So are any of these preserved now? No, not the world. No, no. really. No. Uh, Henry, no. just what you have in the walls now. Yeah. This is yeah. incredible yeah. because the art is worth a lot acid. more than the train at this point. Yeah, clearly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. really, yeah. for sure. So more, more. It was just like this. Tag up your name. Um, ah, yeah. Tough guys. <laughs> <laughs> my my graffiti connections introduced me to breaking, yeah. and I don't want to sound like Columbus or anything, but <laughs> I sort of discovered breaking. <laughs> um, now, obviously, people had seen breaking, not me, but mm -hmm. people who lived in in neighborhoods, uh, marginal neighborhoods, mm -hmm. of course, they saw breaking. And in and schoolyards and everything out in the Bronx and you know far reaches, everybody was breaking. Yeah, was nobody that... downtown had ever seen it. <laughs> so until you know this, I I had to do a performance piece, and I'd heard about breaking when I asked one of the writers, this the guy with the number eight shirt, who was hanging out in my studio. I said, Do you know any breakers? And he said, I know the best crew in the city. Mm -hmm. And the next day, he brought to my studio Frosty Freeze and Crazy Legs. Uh, wow! Crazy Legs from Philly, right? Crazy? crazy? No, he's not. He's from he's from Manhattan, Upper Manhattan. Oh, okay. Um, Baby good. Rock is from from Philly. Okay, I'm not crazy. Legs. Yeah. Um, so that's how the Breakers got in in the, in the documentary. And right? that's how they yeah. <laughs> that's how the Breakers got in the documentary. Right. <laughs> and how they how they started traveling and, and performing all around. But yet yeah, this happened just this happened Whoa. last week. Oh. This is on under 138th Street under the right, under the right, Grand right, Concourse right. in the tunnel. Wow. These these guys they called Dos Alas. Oh my God! It's wonderful. More than oh, it just happened. Yeah, it just happened it's last week. Point. Really? It's from that photograph. Yeah. It's like yeah. established. Yeah. 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 By the way, that's one of Henry's photographs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right there. The exact yeah, yeah. same one. It's yeah. a photo. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I, am, I have to tell you how, how good that makes me feel. I really am happy. You mean that's an authorized oh. subway art? No. no. It wasn't authorized. They didn't know. Oh, no, no. They had to be. Well, I didn't know about it. They didn't know who I was. They didn't know who, who did this picture. Uh, and they, Marty told her. Marty somehow heard her. She went up. There was a presentation, and she went to it. And she said, she Instagrammed it. She said, this photograph, this picture was originally Henry Chalfin's photograph. Wow. <laughs> and they were, and they were, um, you know, they were proud. They were pleased. Wonderful street thing going on. I love this picture. Yeah, this is how. That's awesome. This is, you know, I talked about this, the kind of social creativity of, of this thing. And, and it all was involved. There were people looking up to people who were going to teach them how to do it. All over the place. This is going on. Passing it on and, and becoming part of the culture. This is beautiful. That was that move was you pass you pass huh? it on. That, yeah, that yeah. move right That's there. Exactly. Yeah. The move <laughs> the move walk. Yep. Right. Of course that this is this is Kaysle up in the Slay. top. He he wrote Des as a as a youth. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now he's got this that? program on hot hot ninety seven. New York City. Called the Drama King or something. Yeah. He calls himself yeah. the Drama King. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's not his crew, that's Dollar Bill. Yeah, in the front or he's, he's on top? Now he's on top. top. That's Case Lay. The crew that he's with is the Dollar Bill crew. Mm -hmm. And that's Dollar Bill to his to his right, lower down. Who's over the front? 
I don't know. He had the hat on. He had the hat on. He had the box with the strap. Like, yeah. 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 This was East Harlem. This wow. was 102nd Street. Wow. Just to give you an idea. Was that by Post Avenue? Like yeah. way out Yeah, yeah, way out yeah. east. And this is a park that's yeah. in the same place. Yeah. That's Dez. Yeah. Osiris. Hey. Osiris. Hey, Osiris. <laughs> Osiris is still slim. He's <laughs> slim. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a, this is a crate. This is, a <laughs> so this is the Bronx. This is your neighborhood. This is the Patterson Projects on 3rd Avenue. Wow. Wow. And, and it was, you know, it's the way it was. Look at the fan. Famous. <laughs> Serious. Park, park Serious. Okay. Electricity to the, from the, the, the light pole. Oh, they got electricity from the light pole. No, the 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 <laughs> no little electric generator stuff. <laughs> 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 Everything connected to the city, right? <laughs> and you make your speakers. You make your speakers. And this is, you know, and, and, you, and of course, like everything else, it's competitive. Mm -hmm. And if you make more noise with your speakers, you get the, you get the crowd, mm -hmm. and you win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mrs. Boom, boom, boom. Mrs. Boom, boom. boom. Summer too. night, you know. It's amazing. Wow. <laughs> oh, that is sick. <laughs> that is sick. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's he's the artist. That's Chino. He did the art. He was actually at the time um, a very, very big drug dealer. Mm. So we um, could afford that home. Exactly. Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah. But he also, um, all up and down the street, and there were a lot of his relatives there, and a lot of people from the Dominican Republic that were from his town, mm -hmm. and they all lived here. And he was very big because he was very generous. Mm -hmm. And uh, he took care of everybody there with his business. Wow. And of course, it didn't last forever. Mm -hmm. No, that's the thing. Wow. That's Quake? No. Paris. It looks a little like Quake. But, you know, there was a lot of wonderful... That's Fable. Before he became Popmaster Fable. Yeah. They were kicking the Yeah. And that's Fashion Moda! Oh! <laughs> yep. So that's... That's the place Renny was talking it's about. It's it right? <coughs> extraordinary role. Wow. It had a great role of connecting uptown and downtown. You know, because Stefan Eintz, who was the, the director of the gallery, um, was an artist, a kind of a conceptual artist from Europe. Mm. And he knew people in the downtown art scene and in Europe. And he created this place and he brought everybody together. Amazing things happened there. Yeah. When I opened my, my first gallery in the Bronx, black and white in color gallery, we have floor, worst floor resin lights than these. It was a sweatshop. Mm -hmm. and, and Stefan came, he came to see, you know, Lisa and me working, mm -hmm. and said, you need, you need more lights. He went to Fashion Motor, climbed up, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Took down his clamp lights and mm -hmm. brought me his own clamp lights. They were beat up on Canal yeah, Street, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, wow. So that was the kind of the kind of camaraderie we had. Yeah, um, yeah, so he took yeah. down the, the lights from his gallery and hung them up in my gallery. It was done, we were Beautiful. in competition. He was like, Beautiful. "I love what you're doing. Do it. You know, when you when you can do it, you can return them. Mm -hmm. You know, That's big awesome. respect for that man. That's awesome." Mm -hmm. Now the downtown, at the downtown component of this was fun gallery as Patty Astor with a, with a kind of symbolic with the with the martini glass <laughs> and one of and one of her uptown friends who came to the show. 
showing her his jacket. This is Fashion Moto with T-Kid and Sam, two graffiti writers, looking in. Very, very, very early street art. This was uh, a British guy named Richard Hamilton, who's, who's still around. Um, he, did he, did, he did the shadow guy. He did the shadow guy. And I caught him at work. Nice. <laughs> he did some good ones. He did some great ones. Back then, he painted these things in, in dark and shadowy places. You'd see figures, and, and they'd be scary. Yeah. Of course, this is the crack and black wall, which is now maintained and protected by the city of New York. Oops. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, what Rennie was saying about the handball court and the ball. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. I defy you, you to see, see the ball. ball. I don't know yeah. ball. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Uh, you guys are serious about that. Oh, oh, this is the Sunday, Sunday morning activity. If you're going to go paint, you got to bring a bucket and a, and a roller. Representing, and you're going to go play. In the Bronx, in, in order to get a handball and paddleboard, were critical. They were just as competitive, just as symbolic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was really important. Wow. Wow. There's wow. Dondi. Wow. This is Martha Cooper's picture of Dondi. Oh, Martha Cooper? Yeah. Wow. And this is uh, this is why I put it in. And this is Martha Cooper's picture of Dandy after wow. the buck. Mm. So oh, that's after it's been bucked. That's after it's been bucked. Oh, so man. this is all about the kind of opposition mm -hmm. and the, the growing difficulty oh. of painting, which began sort of be didn't begin, but this is kind of a benign version of it. And of course, a ser more serious, destructive yeah. version yeah. of it. Yeah. And a, a, another serious destructive yeah. version of it. <laughs> this guy, that cat, a lot, cat yeah, yeah. and a lot of followers, oh, I and around, that. crossing people out and yeah. and all that. He wasn't even that good. Yeah, no, he just liked going over people. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so you met him, right? Yeah. yeah. I was. I mean, like, what was he? What did he say? Like, what, what did he say? Why did he do it? He. Um, like he said, he's in Style Wars talking about it. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And he says, yeah, that. He says for me, the object is more. Not <laughs> the biggest, so not the biggest oh and the beautifulest, but more. <laughs> that was so stupid. He was a king bomber. He was a king, was a king bomber. I can't stand this guy. I'm a bomber. I just can't stand But he did, from what I understand, he did refrain from, from bombing certain but writers. Oh, just, I didn't just know that. Um, Self-expression through vandalism. In your, in the, in the, in your, the transit book, <laughs> somebody about mentions about uh, how they didn't, they didn't tax didn't certain go people. Over, so you're right. I had, the reason why I knew him at all was because we were making Style Wars. Mm -hmm. And Tony Silver, who was the director, knew how to make a film. Mm -hmm. I was the person who knew the subject. I didn't know how to make a film. Mm -hmm. um, he said to me, he said, everybody is complaining about Cap. We interview all these kids and they're, and they're complaining about Cap. So who's Cap? So I said, who Cap was. And he said, we need him. I said, no, you're not going to get him. <laughs> because why would we, if we put him in the film, we'll lose all of our confidence with everybody else. It's a big betrayal to, to make Cap famous. Mm. by putting him in the film. Mm. And you're asking me, this is crazy, I can't do it. So we argued this for weeks, and I finally came around. I said, you're right. We have nothing except all these people talking about something we're not going to see. <laughs> and um, so I found, I went to Cap, because obviously he had friends in the graffiti movement that didn't want to admit that they were friends. Oh, wow. And Wow. And I knew who those people were. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I asked them. And so they introduced me to him. And uh, the first thing he said was, he said, he said, yeah, I'll be in your movie, but I'm going to wear a mask. <laughs> 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 so so I, went, I went to Tony and I said, 
that, and Tony said, oh no, <laughs> you can't wear a mask. I said, well, that's the only way you're going to get them. <laughs> and so, on the day, he didn't wear the mask. He didn't wear the mask. Wow. No. He was, you know. <coughs> Is he still around? Yep. Mm. He's still around. He's better now. I mean, he's like, he's really, he's, he's evolved. He's um, yeah. He he's went evolved. through a period where he, yeah, he's you know, evolved. he's evolved in a way. He, he got onto the going to Europe circuit. Mm -hmm. To and he isn't really a good artist. Mm. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's a very limited he's artist. Yeah. But um, because he was famously cap in the mm -hmm. movie and everything, he got to go on these trips. Mm -hmm. But he had about two years ago. He had a stroke, um, and so he's not well. Jim, in looking at these, to me, it seems like it evolved from something that was a social statement to something that was an art statement. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in the beginning it seemed more like a statement about what was going on in their lives, and then in the end, there's so much color and shape, that's mm -hmm. what you start to see. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In the beginning you see the message, uh -huh. but as it develops, it becomes like a painting. Uh-huh. You know? And the I message, wonder about that. The message is kind of implied. Yeah, but it's, it's just people's names mostly, except for the the few, like the soft yeah. bomb and things like that. It's just the idea of putting your name up and claiming some portion of the city, <coughs> or being on this media, you know, being one of the people on the internet, you know, when nobody else is on it, right, mm -hmm. is a kind of, of, it has to be the appeal, otherwise Instagram. how do you explain, how do you explain how this stuff, <laughs> how this activity spread around the world like mm -hmm. it did? Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Why? It's because there's this need or desire to project yourself onto your surroundings. Yeah, but in a culture like Germany, there's not the same, there's not the same engine in Germany. Germany didn't start doing this until the late 90s. Mm. I didn't see it for a few years in Germany until uh -huh. the late 90s. Mm. They picked it up from New York. Yeah. They weren't doing it because they were disenfranchised gang kids. No, but they, but they understand. Yeah, but it wasn't coming from the same place. That's right. Yeah. But it has, like, there has to be an element of identification yeah. with the marginal, with the right. people who are who you see as being poor and struggling and beaten down and having yeah, no voice. Yeah, but it's voice. not you, it's them. So how do you explain that? Well, they identify with them because maybe they have the same kind of, as adolescents, maybe the same kind of alienation from their own society. And also it's a rebellious, it, like not all the kids in graffiti were were poor from the hood. Yeah, not exactly. at all. You ha you have not some, at all. You have some more. Yeah. Get some very. Yeah, they're rebellious people who are well off. Let's put it that way. Right. 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 Yeah. Also, there's this whole there's this transformation of your environment. Like you have this shared public spaces, and there's no like they belong to everybody and nobody. And, and yeah. the the creation of a new image and the sharing, you know, mm -hmm. and this broad way. And a radically different aesthetic from what you're seeing all the time in the city. Yeah. It's, it's not square, it's round. Right. And therefore, it, it contradicts right, it and contradicts this and, and it's counter. It's counter culture. Yeah. What's that doing? Yeah. 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 I just think it's interesting that there's the, companies like Miro Arts are not really giving credit to these guys, you know, and companies like Miro Arts is like completely corporate like Caucasian, like rich you white people, which is trying to just stamp uh -huh. out this art. Yeah, they want to stamp it out. Yeah, so it's it's it with some real art. Yeah, it's yeah, going, yeah, yeah. 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 I just think that's interesting. Real yeah. meaning. Yeah. Well, there, there are a lot of. There's a lot of. There was the first one was actually in Philadelphia, where it was officially it was connected to the transit system. There was, and I don't, I forget what it was called, but you were renouncing to do illegal graffiti, mm -hmm. and you would get paint, and you'd be invited to do mural art. So graffiti network. Yeah. You're talking about the anti-graffiti yeah. network. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you that see. happened here way early. Yeah. And, so and they at, they forbid the styles. Yeah. If you had anything that looked like, you know, B-boy characters, that was forbidden. Hey, you needed Disney. If you had any kind of writing, 
That was forbidden. You had to do Disney characters. Right. Right. And the so weird thing <laughs> is, they're now paying people to fucking spray paint the railroad rights away down here with really crappy logos. Uh -huh. They're paying people from Europe to do that. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, you wow. take, wow. take the right. train to New York and just yeah. look out the window. There's a, whole, yeah. so stupid. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's, you know, generally <laughs> put up by by professional artists. Uh -huh. really but bad. you know something? It's sort of abstract. It's it is funny. happening. It doesn't but have the, anybody's name. But, the but what's <laughs> happening is that the graffiti writers have gone over and gone over that stuff with their own stuff again, so they're putting back. He got a commission for those. Yes, I'm, that's what I'm saying. The, 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 the authorities hired him to do that, to vandalize North Philadelphia with that stuff, <coughs> right? And they're prosecuting kids who make much better art on the same wall, right? Right, right. That's, yeah. that's, that's well, it's like advertisement. Do. Advertisement is okay because somebody's paying. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. they're so your face. They're all over advertisement. The has to do with you can't control it. Once you start... Putting one above the other, you're gonna you're causing the same thing. You say that the mural arts were wrong or the graffiti arts is wrong. That, that's part of the same problem. I'm just saying that the people you know, who the same people who are paying for the jail to throw taggers in are paying some other vandal to spray paint the same building. What the hell's going on? You know? I don't think it's one above the other. I, I just think that you know. I mean, I was actually at open source where mural arts had an opening with. A, uh, they, they said that it was a curator, and, and I'm like, okay, wow, hold on a second. I, 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 I have a little bit more respect for Mr. Chalfant than, you know, Mirror Arts, only because, you know, they're not even, you know, they're not even showing these pictures, and not even showing the source of where this stuff came from. They just have, like, a bunch of artists who came out of college, you know, and, and who are um, painting stuff on walls, have no knowledge of the source of where this came from, you don't and, they, know and that. I, I'm pretty sure they could care less. You don't know that. I think that's that's arrogant to say. Oh, I mean, I totally understand. I, mean, I, I have you some. Don't, I, you don't know where those people are coming from, or what their inspirations or sources are. Okay, that's that's totally understandable. I have some friends in my eyes, but that's that's totally yeah. Well, it's involved a lot, because you know, with the anti graffiti network, and, and it sure was aware of graffiti back then. Mm. So probably. The, the people who run it still Yeah, are. no, I understand. That was the original name, right? Anti-Graffiti? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's a bunch of different voices. People, <laughs> yeah. Like, people apply to mural arts to try to get, you know, they have a, they have a project and they try to get people to help them with it. Mm -hmm. And then they get a chance to right. do it. So there's a lot of different voices and some are corporate and some are individuals who with a, with a vision. Yeah, I think it's don't get me wrong. I think mural, mural arts is, is a is an ornament to Philadelphia. No question about it. I just uh, don't like the institutionalization of mm. and that's all. You know, yeah. uh, art and whatever, wherever and whenever it happens. Yeah, that's all. The flip side could be said when you start taking these graffiti arts and you put them in galleries. Sure, they're they institutionalized in that. institutionalized too. That's, yeah. you know. But what yeah. Henry's talking about, the origins of this was like absolutely, it wasn't even anti-establishment because no. I doubt these yeah. kids had much notion of what the establishment right. was. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. But it was yeah. self-expression under yeah. bad, under harsh yeah. conditions harsh and it's a, the human spirit Doing its thing and yeah. it's great. Yeah. And it, it was always more beautiful than what's surrounding it. And I think these pictures uh -huh. of where right. they are back up, when you have your pictures that are back away and you can really see the surrounding, that's when you really realize how they were really creating something beautiful. In yeah, in fact, yeah. I'd like to see that. Bunch of graffiti. Well, the other thing I would, I would like to add, yeah. the, mm -hmm. if you walk in, if you go to Chelsea or you go into down to Fish Town, wherever the galleries are concentrated, yeah. and you're gonna see a lot of crap. Yeah. You're gonna see sure. also wonderful artwork, sure. but so it's not because you paint with Belgium sable and you paint, and you paint <laughs> yeah, exactly. that your art is gonna be good. Exactly. Um, no, some fine, you know, so-called fine artists are very good, <laughs> but some are like really shallow and empty. Yeah. The same thing with the graph world. Some were, were had 
were profound and some were like really full of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, so. it's, the, uh, it's the best mural work for her because it's, it's never designed just by one artist. Mm -hmm. So you always have to work with the community. Uh -huh. So whatever okay. image they choose is actually chosen by the community. Well, I think there's a lot of value in the kind of, that kind of dialogue which takes place. Uh, the 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 I think there's value that. in that. Oh. But it also make, creates the lowest common denominator. And the, yeah. the, when the individual artist has the power to be a creative force, yeah. you, you get passion. You get yeah, work that has yeah, the quality. Yeah, that, you know, decide, it's like cooking with like 10, 10 cooks in one pot. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. you're going to get some. You know, you're not going to get any spicy. Yeah, yeah, you know. The same thing about art. When, when, I mean, personally, I don't art collective artists. Like, I don't think there's no power in them. They're pretty, but they just need to. I think there's always, in, in, uh, in the this type of art, been a uh, fight over who controls the space that you put art in. Uh, the church controlled it for a long time, yeah, yeah. Right. and then right. uh, rich patrons controlled yeah. it. Yeah. And, um, and 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 there's a fact. There's a wonderful uh, uh, silkscreen from uh, um, from Paris in '68. Uh -huh. uh, the police control the streets. We control the walls. And that's what they did. They you know who's the work that is? Studio. Yo. Pardon? You know whose work that is? Yeah, it's Beaux Arts. It's, it's the Beaux Arts yeah. collective. The, I mean, the, the whole thing in '68 was that there was uh, uh, that that the militants controlled. Beaux Arts and and set up silkscreen studios in mm. Beaux Arts to produce everything from the the sort of famous images you'd see of you know uh, the gall mitter on both nose mm. and you know and people yes to uh, to to manifestos and meeting notices and they would just plaster um, the the uh, the quarter and 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 then it spread to factories and wherever. The, the uh, May of '68, you know, had, had power, mm. and but but it was a, it was a fight about who controlled those walls, mm. and and that's that's what that's this is, and, and who, who controls public space, mm -hmm. and There's sometimes a, then it gets um, co-opted and commercialized, and sometimes the the same artist uh, will say, oh, geez, I can make a career out of this, I can. Mm. Yeah, but, and and it's it, one of the great things about this art is, for a, from its early stages, it was a mix of uh, of gang kids and art students, mm. yeah. and that that was that in itself was a, a wonderful yeah. coming together. Yeah. 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 But there's, there's a couple of high schools in New York that yeah. produced a whole bunch. Yeah. The uh, yeah. well. The, Music and art. Music and art was one of them. Art design. School, art design. Yeah. When I when I started graduate school in the School of Fine Arts, uh, the the painters in 1967 that class were incredibly good street fighters, Ooh. and they were all very committed anti-war activists. Wow. So there was a, there was a, a really coming together around oh that, and, uh, and you know. They, they were looking for different ways to paint. Because uh, mm. so. graffiti has always existed. That spray yeah. can became this like permanent. became this amazing. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's you talk to you industrial. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, here's a picture of uh, the 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 attempt to wall out the to exclude the writer yeah, from the train yard with uh, mm -hmm. the barbed wire. <laughs> uh, it's crying out in protest. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, wow. I, was, oh I was looking. This is, um, you know, when 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 Bush went to war in in Iraq. I was looking, always looking for something that was, might be protest art, and I, I didn't really find it. Um, this was as close as we got. It's Pat's crew, and they did a kind of story about 
protest movement without taking any sides. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, and this was in the Bronx um, in the in the mid 2000s. <laughs> Stop the war. Okay. However, going to when I went to Birmingham, this guy's name was Muhammad Ali, and he's a street artist in Birmingham. And of course, there he did a lot of Palestinian um, protest art. Free Palestine wiped up our TV screens, but not from our hearts. Wow! Wow! And this is in the community of a lot of uh, Muslim immigrants in Birmingham. And you know, actually, he told me that the most popular name in in the UK has always been Jack oh. until recently, and now it's Mohammed. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> Out of fear or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What motivated that? Um, no, no. I think okay. uh, demographics. Demographics. Yeah. 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 You guys. Yeah. Look at that war. Yeah. He's in Birmingham. Yeah. <laughs> wow. My name is John. And then, but of course, wow. the, cast back to the early '80s. Um, this is kind of our New York graffiti martyr, was a guy named Michael Stewart, represented here by a bartender in the guise of a Von Baudet preacher, this little guy in, uh, in brown, um, depicted as a topless bar. Um, so Michael Stewart works there, he leaves work, says goodbye to his one of his colleagues, <laughs> and is off to to ride the trains home, and he has his little marker, and he's making wow. a piece. The cops come, they kill him. Um, wow. um, they choked him to death. Wow. Um, you know, and here's uh, this was this was a little mural on the Lower East Side. 8th Street, I think, by, mm -hmm. by 3rd Avenue, 2nd Avenue. Is that still there? It's not still there. Wow. It's gone. And it's kind of but talking about 250 black people summarily executed without trial, blah, blah, blah. Was that but, gate put up afterwards? Huh? Was that gate there put up afterwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, this was, the piece was done, then they started to build something here, temporary thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that was... You know, it's like this is an issue that goes on forever, uh, the, the police brutality issue. Um, it happens that that I was in oh. I was in Venice and the Biennale mm -hmm. this year, um, and there's these. This is uh, this include this. It's a wonderful thing. It's like stamps that this guy created uh, with messages like "End Police Brutality," "No Pasaran." And uh, they, then they stamped them on pieces of paper. Wow. Um, <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. That is very cool. And so they were done on site, the printing? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It looks like there's something special about that and wood, too. Brutality. Yeah. That special wood. I, I don't know what the wood was. It was, they, it was composite wood. They, they put you know, boards together to build up the mass before they carved it. Um, so back, harking back to Lee Quinones in the 80s, talking about um, graffiti dying. The next thing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. But of course, it lasts anywhere. This yes, is this is really. last last month in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow! A big a meeting of oh, you went to that. Right. battle, yeah. of whatever. The battle of the battle of the styles. Mm. This is Istanbul, in wow, yeah. two years ago, street artists, a pair of German street artists named uh, Haircut. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. And of course. 
Hindi painting a train in Istanbul in the scrapyard. Wow. They got semi permission to do. A French artist named Sikos is affiliated with the 156 crew, which is Washington Heights. So those trains that they painted, they're old and they're not going anywhere, right? They're not going anywhere. <laughs> they're, they're, that's the scrapyard. That's definitely a lot. You can have the thrill, <laughs> semi-thrill, <laughs> with, with impunity. That's Cope. He was there visiting for this. There was a big exhibit in the museum there. Martha's still doing her uh, thing. Yeah. An artist named Miss Istanbul. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Marty, a little homage to Marty by Tilt, an artist, stencil artist named Ico at the bottom. Whoa. Bologna, Whoa. organized by the Museum of Modern Art of Bologna. Whoa! Yeah. We'll never get, they'll never they, get they, they're they doing amazing stuff there. <laughs> they're getting permission from the city, the, the museum, mm -hmm. to, to hire artists paint, you know, street artists to paint, and to have, a, to have them do something in relationship to the architecture, because clearly that's, when you do the communal thing of, of having a dialogue with the authorities and with some intervention like the museum, and you're a street artist, you, you can actually do something good, like create something in harmony with the, with the surroundings, and still get off with something really uh, bad, like this. I kind of like it when there is dialogue. This is Lokis, who's in my spray can art book. And I saw him there in Bologna after 35 years or something. What's his name again? Lokis. This is, this is an artist named Blue. Yeah, it's, it depicts... Is that Lady? Darth Vader. No. Yeah, it depicts... This is a, this is a, a, a demonstration and a confrontation of bakers and butchers in the town of Bologna uh, confronting the city about uh, something. And I, I meant to look it up today to try to, to, to be able to say what it was. But it was a, it was a social clash uh, within the city, and it's quite extraordinary, the painting. I mean, He's even got a Sasquatch with a maid. Look at him with a finger. Chewbacca. Yeah, yeah it's nice. nice. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. <laughs> Somebody, you know, the butchers with their salt, their bologna. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> and this oh, is an homage shit. to Case 2. Oh, it's in Los Angeles. Case, when, oh. you know, Case died a couple of years ago. Case died a couple of years yeah. ago? Yeah. He mentored a lot of young artists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here is, here is, I, I think every mother's nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's created by Todd James, who, when I met him, was a, like a 12-year-old kid named Reese. Mm -hmm. so before he was Reese, he was named Blight. <laughs> well, and now he's, he's he creates this installation for shows of, of a graffiti writer's bedroom. That's Doze. That's, that's Doze. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This was in Venice. Um, this was this this year. The show is still up. It was part of the Biennale in the in the in the San Basilio Terminale. Yeah. They invited street artists. Doze, Doze, oh, Futura, wow. Futura wow. a sculpture by Futura. Wow. Um, mode 2, and this is a rug. This is actual tapestry that was woven in his wow. design. Oh my God. And me. Ah. They projected. Um, they projected what? They projected the trains onto a wall, train side. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. It entered and left. It came That's in through. Sick. It stopped. That's so sick. How many yeah. pieces did they include? Thirty. Wow. Mm. wow. 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 Jeez. How long would they would they stop at the station? <laughs> Twenty-five seconds. Oh. It's kind of long enough for people to get on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
they, they, I'm surprised mm -hmm. these are my files, which aren't that big. But, but the way they did it, they had three projectors that they fused together like dissolves in video. So that they were sharp. Okay, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's